Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on levels of measurement in statistics. When we collect data in counseling research, we have to consider the level of measurement. And when referring to the level of measurement of a variable, what we're really talking about is the classification that describes the properties of the information that we're gathering. And we have four levels of measurement. We have nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. And the way to think about these four levels is that as you move from the lowest level, which is nominal, to the next level up, which is ordinal, ordinal contains all the properties of nominal plus something additional. And similarly, as you move to interval, interval has all the properties of ordinal plus something additional and then ratio has all the properties of interval plus something additional. So the ratio level of measurement is the most useful, but as you will see when I go through the descriptions of each one, we can't always measure at that level of measurement. So we have to know what we're able to do, what types of statistics we can use with each level of measurement. So the first one, I'll discuss is nominal. Nominal is also referred to as categorical. And th at the nominal level of measurement, there is no ranking. Right? So examples of nominal levels of measurement would be religion, a participant's favorite color, gender, a diagnosis, or ethnicity. If you sample participants and they provide you favorite colors like red, green, blue, and yellow, that represents information that is potentially useful, but you can't rank those colors. You can't have one color as superior to or representing some higher state than another. They're all simply colors. So that really limits the statistics we can use when looking at the nominal level of measurement. We can, of course, count, right? So in the example of favorite color, we can count the number of participants that selected blue as their favorite color, and the number of participants that selected green as their favorite color. We can also calculate the percent. So if you had 100 participants, and 55 were female, and 45 were male, you could say the 55% of the sample was female. You can also calculate the mode. So using the color example, if you sampled 10 individuals and five indicated their favorite color was blue and three yellow and two red, you could say that the modal favorite color was blue because that value appeared five times, which is more than any other value in that sample. You can also apply the chi-square statistic to the nominal level of measurement. The chi-square statistic can tell us about the probability that a frequency was observed by chance alone. So using gender as an example, we would presume in most samples that the expectation would be that we'd have 50% female and 50% male. So if you were to sample a population and you were to have 60 females and 40 males in that sample, a chi-square statistic can tell you what the probability is that you could observe that 60 female and 40 male division by random chance alone, by random error alone. Moving on to the next level of measurement, we have ordinal. And again, ordinal has all the characteristics of nominal, but it adds in rank. So examples would be excellent, great, good, fair, and poor, first, second, and third place in a race where we don't know the times. So you, you wouldn't know if uh, first finished the race in five minutes and second finished it in 10 or 15. So you don't know the difference in minutes between the first and second place and the third place 
you just simply know that there was a first, second, and third. High, medium, and low is an example. You can rank them, but you don't know the difference between high, medium, and low. And then you have Likert scales. And Likert scales are interesting in that some researchers consider them to be interval. And I'll discuss the interval scale next. And others consider them to be ordinal. And I think which category that you use for a Likert scale really depends on the research behind that scale. So let's say you're using a Likert scale to measure happiness. And you have participants and they would answer uh, very unhappy, unhappy, fine, and then happy or very happy. Is the difference between very happy and happy the same as fine and unhappy? It would not be unusual to classify a Likert scale like that as ordinal, meaning we can rank them. We know very happy is higher on the scale than happy, but we really don't know the difference between the different ranks. We don't know if there's really an equal interval between very happy and happy and fine. We simply know the order. So looking at statistics, uh, of course, ranking is possible. And also you can calculate the median value because you can rank order them. You can select the value that's in the middle after the rank ordered. So moving on to the interval scale. So the interval scale has all the properties of ordinal, but it adds this concept of equal interval. So now the distance between the scores is equal. So some examples would be uh, IQ, Celsius, and Fahrenheit. So if you consider a 10 degree difference on the Fahrenheit scale, and you look at that 10 degree difference applied from say 35 degrees to 45 degrees, that represents the same difference in temperature applied to another value. So the difference between 75 degrees and 85 degrees is still 10 degrees, and that represents the same difference in temperature as from 35 to 45. So with the intervals being equal on the interval scale, there are a lot more possible statistics that can be used. Values measured on an interval level measurement can be added or subtracted. You can calculate the mean, the standard deviation. You can apply statistics like ANOVA, regression, correlation, and factor analysis. An important item to note about the interval scale is there's no true zero on an interval scale. So if you look at the examples I have at the top, IQ, the Celsius temperature scale, and the Fahrenheit temperature scale, although there's an equal interval there, there's no true zero. The zero on the Fahrenheit scale, for example, doesn't represent the absence of any heat. It's just another number along that scale. And for that reason, we can't make judgments about how many times hotter one temperature is as compared to another based on the numbers that would correspond. For example, 60 degrees isn't twice as hot as 30 degrees. And an IQ of 100 is not twice as intelligent as an IQ of 50. So the scales may actually contain a zero, like there is a zero in Celsius, there's a zero in Fahrenheit, but it's not a true zero. It doesn't represent the absence of, in this case, heat. So this concept of true zero brings me to the ratio level of measurement. At the ratio level of measurement, we have an equal interval and a true zero. So a common example would be the number of times a behavior is observed. So if you operationalized the concept of an anger outburst and you measured participants, and one participant had five 
anger outburst in the course of a week, and another had 10. You have equal interval, meaning the difference between 5 and 10 is the same as the difference between 10 and 15. And you can also, using the corresponding numbers, calculate how many times one event for a participant occurred versus another. So the example of anger that I just used, if a participant had 10 anger outbursts and another participant had 5, the participant at 10 had twice as many as the participant with 5. Other examples would be height, weight, the Kelvin temperature scale, income, and age all have a true zero. In the Kelvin scale, zero represents no heat or an absence of temperature, unlike the zero in the Celsius and Fahrenheit scales. And of course the statistics available for the ratio level of measurement are numerous. Uh, you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide using this level of measurement and most statistical procedures can be applied to the ratio level measurement. It's worth noting here that in counseling research the interval level of measurement as well as the ratio are both very common and as I mentioned a wide variety of statistics can be applied to interval to the interval level of measurement as well. And if you're using statistical software, uh, for example, like SPSS, SPSS treats interval and ratio levels of measurement as what's referred to as scale. So it does not distinguish between interval and ratio. It refers to both as the scale level measurement. So in SPSS, you have nominal, ordinal, and scale as opposed to nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. I hope you found this video on the levels of measurement and statistics to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.